if any Linux YouTuber is going to talk about anime, it's going to be me. How in the world did I not hear about this earlier? But for today's video, I think we need to prepare, and for that we need a costume change. Now I think we're ready, so today we're looking at Annie CLI. This is a simple script to help you watch anime directly from your terminal. Obviously you're not watching it, you know, in the terminal window itself, it's more like loading it up with something like, say, MPV. Anyway, the way we use this program is actually incredibly easy. So if you just run any CLI without any arguments, it's going to prompt you for the name of the series you want to watch. Let's say you're one of the three dot hack fans out there and you want to go back and watch something like dot hack sign. So if we go and search for that one, let's see if it's actually here. And in this case, it actually is. Now, as you will notice, some symbols do get dropped out of what you actually search for. So anything that isn't a letter or a number is going to be removed, which in cases like dot hack sign, uh, does make it a little bit annoying to work out which one you want to select if there is more options in the list. But in this case, we just have dot hack sign and the dub, which I don't know why you would watch the dub. Anyway, um, let's go and select the first option. Then it's going to prompt us for the episode we actually want to watch. Now, there's two types of values you can enter here. You can either go and select a specific episode. So, you know, 3, 6, 10, whatever, or 21, I guess. Whatever episode you want to watch. Or you could go and select a range. Now, normally when you see a range, it would be something like 2 dash eight, for example. Now, in this case, we don't actually include the dash. What we use is a space as the separator. So let's say one space 10. Now, I would avoid using the range option. Um, the problem with this one is in some situations, it might start playing all 10 of the videos at the exact same time. Uh, that's just because the way that it queues them up. The better option is to just go and select a specific episode, and then when we do that, it will actually give us the option to go and play the next one after the one we're, you know, watching right now has finished. It will take a little bit of time to actually open up, but that's just due to the, um, the service it's trying to connect to. And then once that's done, you know, you can just start watching it. It's going to work exactly as you'd expect. You may have spotted these controls just before, but once you've finished the episode, you can go and play the next one, play the previous one. Since we're on the first episode, obviously we can't go and do that. You can select an episode, so if you realize maybe, you know, the episode you were watching wasn't the one that you're actually supposed to be watching, you've already seen it before, or it's w later in the series, you can go and jump to a different one, or you can go and replay the current episode, and obviously you can quit the application, but you could always do that by just pressing Control c anyway. So let's go and select a different episode. Episode. Let's say this time we want to go to episode 21. It's going to go and get the data for that episode and then give it a moment to start playing and we should be good to go. Now, this is the only problem with working with this tool. It does take quite a bit of time between each episode to actually get the data for it and to start playing it, but it's not really that big of a deal. I should have mentioned this earlier, but you can actually skip that search prompt at the start of the application. That can be done by just passing in the name of the thing you actually want to search for rather than using the interactive prompt. So once again, let's search for dot hack slash slash sign, and that's going to give us the exact same options that we saw before. But one problem this does have, or maybe is a problem if you have a slow internet connection, is by default, it's going to default to the best quality available. Now, I would like the option to go and change the quality setting inside of the application itself. Maybe on this screen right here, or just before selecting the episode you want to watch, so that you don't have to go and restart the application every time you want to change that because you don't select the exact right setting. But because it is like that, the way we go and change this is by going and running any CLI with the dash Q option. Now, this supports a couple of values. It'll support things like 360, 480, 720, 1080, whatever is supported on that specific upload. Or your other option is to include the keywords, which is what I usually do. So worst is going to give you the worst quality available, and best is what it defaults to, will give you the best quality available. It's just easier than trying to work out what is supported on each upload. One thing to note about setting the quality is if you want to include the search term as well, this needs to be done after all of the other options you include. So including it on this side is going to work. You will get search results back, 
The other way around, it is going to run, but it's not actually going to run the way you might expect it to. So instead, what it's going to do is say no search results were actually found. This seems to be a bug in the way that it was programmed, but if you just keep that in mind, it's not a big deal. Now, all of that's well and good for a new series you want to watch, but what about something you're already watching that you want to go back to? Now, obviously, you could go and just search for the name, but there is a much easier option, and that is including the dash capital H option, which will include a history of all of the things that you've been watching. And then from here, the interface is going to work the exact same way we saw before. So let's go back to dot hack sign. So pressing six is going to open up that one. And then it's going to go and get the data for that one. It'll take us to the last episode we've watched, which in our case was 21. So it's going to start on the next episode being 22. And give it a second, it should start playing it. Now, up until this point, we've been streaming everything, but Annie CLI does include a download option. But from my testing, it doesn't seem to be currently working. I was just testing it off camera, and every single time I tried to run it, I got a 403 error. So I don't know if that's a problem with the way the script is working, or a problem with the site itself. It very well could be both of them. Maybe it'll be patched in the future, but it's very likely that, for now at least, you're only going to be able to stream. But... To be completely honest, if you're using something like this, streaming is probably all you want anyway. Plus, if you want to download stuff, there is a uh, much, much better site that you can use. Now, if you want to go and install this, there's basically no dependencies. The only dependency that isn't something you already have pre-installed is MPV. The rest of them are things like sed and curl, which you already should have installed. Now, as for the program itself, it's just a shell script. So if you go into mod it and then put it into your path, you can go and run it perfectly fine. Now, I do want to talk about how it actually works. So basically what it does is it pulls from a website called gogoanime.pe. Now, these sites spin up every so often they'll be like .pe.au.org.com they come and go basically every other day so at some point this service is going to disappear and then another mirror is going to appear when that does happen all you would really need to do to fix it is go and change the domain it's pulling from and then basically you're good to go because all of them work in the exact same way uh, they just always pop up on different domains. Make sure you do keep in mind that some of those sites are very heavily full of malware, so just be careful about what ones you're actually using. But it would be really nice to be able to configure this through an option, because even if the mirror isn't going down, sometimes that mirror is going to be really, really slow. Maybe it's getting a lot of traffic, or maybe it's really far away from you, and you want to try out a different one that might give you better speeds. Considering this is just a shell script, it is very easy to modify, but that would be a nice bit of convenience that could be added. Now, I know I'm really late to this, and Kenny has already talked about it. I talked about Kenny's video on my last live stream I did. I'm well aware, but I felt like it would be fun to talk about. And as I said at the start of this video, if anybody's going to talk about anime, it's going to be me. Now, obviously, using a site like this, questionably legal. But I'm going to leave the moral argument up to you for me. I like to support the series that I watch. I typically will buy, you know, merch. As you can see from this, I didn't buy this for the sake of this meme. I, uh, I, I already own this and the cat, look, ignore the cat is. But I have a wall of light novels and this is the way that I like to support my content. I buy a bunch of merch, but I will leave that up to you. I'm not telling you that you should use this or you shouldn't use this. Tools like this are always going to exist and I feel like it's sort of my job to tell you that they do. So if you like the channel and you want to support, I guess, my content endeavors and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribers only bearer pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about, about I'm not going to restart that, but find us YouTube shorts. I also wear the cat ears there. So if you want to see the cat ears more, uh, go and check that out. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.